All right, everyone, welcome to the show today. We have a very special guest. It's gonna help you learn a lot about marketing and promoting online. So our guest is Jesse Lakes. And Jesse left Apple, a very prestigious job at Apple, to launch a series of websites that utilize the iTunes and Amazon affiliate programs. But he quickly realized that they had some issues with actually making money with what he calls geo-fragmented audiences, which means audiences in different countries all over the world. And the problem was that if you look at iTunes affiliate program or Amazon affiliate program, is that they, they have these very country specific affiliate programs like only for the US or only for the UK. And so they actually came up with a solution that allowed you know, entrepreneurs, authors, marketers to have one link that would work for every customer anywhere in the world and allow that entrepreneur author to make money from all of those links. Uh, so it made it convenient and easier. And it's just a really cool tool. It's a tool that I've been using for several years now and I love it. Uh, I can't say enough good things about it. And so that's why I brought Jesse on the show to share with you guys this amazing tool uh, and why he came up with it and how it can help you earn more money and save you a ton of time. So Jesse, it's great to have you man, here, man. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for um, <laughs> all the support over the years. It's great to finally connect. Yeah, man. So, so tell us kind of about your background and, and why you decided to start this this business and create this tool. Yeah. So, um, I, I knew from early on in college that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, just it, it was so much more appealing to uh, to do these projects and had a handful of different projects I did with my roommates uh, over the early days. And then, like you said, I did these series of websites. Um, but also drinking the Apple Kool Aid at a, an early age. And when the opportunity to go work at Apple and manage their affiliate program came up, I, I definitely jumped ship and, and ran towards it. Um, it was really kind of the combination of both those experiences that led to to the path forward. Seeing that at Apple, I was only really making this problem bigger. This is problem, yeah, exactly. Geo fragmentation, where we have country and region specific storefronts and affiliate programs that are specific to those storefronts. So again, if you want to monetize uh, your traffic coming from different parts of the world, it requires a specialized link. You can't just use one link and hope that it works for everyone. So just really seeing that from the other side and knowing that problem uh, that I had faced. Um, with my different websites really cemented it that this was this was a unique opportunity i was you know uniquely um i had the unique opportunity to, to really push forward and have the background experiences to, to do something with it so uh, why not dove in and it's been a it's been a roller coaster ride ever since yeah that's awesome i mean i mean this is definitely a problem that i i've had for years because you know I, i've published you know 20 books myself i have a publishing company we've published hundreds of books and in each of our books we try to have links um at the end of the book that says, hey, you know, go review my book here or go buy the book on Amazon here or check out my other books that we publish here. And the problem with those links is that, is that they change, right? And they're also country specific. So like it would only be for Amazon US. So if a customer bought my book in Europe and they click that link, they would go to an error page that said, you can't buy this book, it's not available. And it's just mm -hmm. because the link was wrong and there was like no way to fix it. And so what I would do is I would, I read, you know, I would always be searching for new tools like the one you created and I would find a tool and it would work for a couple months and then you know the company was shut down or something and the link would stop working. I had to go back to all my books, update all the links. It just became a massive waste of time and effort. Um, so I, I definitely see like how big this problem is. Uh, like why did this problem come about? Like why why was it so ridiculously hard? And why are these companies like Apple doing this and making it such a pain in the butt to just have a simple link that works for everybody? Yeah, great question. Um, and one that I ask regularly, you know, when when is it that um that these guys are going to rule out their own solution. But you know, so far, you know, we're, we're six years into this now. Um, they really haven't. So the reason they do it, and this is, um, you know, every, every company is going to have a slightly different thing. But typically, major companies will create different entities in different parts of the world, typically for tax reasons. So you, know, you have the different versions of Apple and different versions of Amazon. And they operate under the same umbrella company, but they're these different entities. And then it's also, so that's kind of the tax finance reason. It's also much easier for the engineering teams and so forth to kind of create these siloed experiences instead of having to make something do be even more functional. Um, then you get the different teams and so forth. Amazon operates really siloed. Apple is, is a little bit better, but it's just easier when they, you know, Amazon did a couple acquisitions in Europe, which has led to Amazon.de and Amazon.co.uk. Um, so it was easier just to kind of keep those separate. And over time, they've definitely you know, looked more and more the same and, and you know, share more technology. So fundamentally, it's easier to launch a new storefront internationally that is to expand an existing set of tools to kind of support a different place. Um, and this gets uh, even more complicated for countries like China, uh, Japan, Brazil, uh, India, and so forth. That requires any sort of entity there to be um, 
a, a partnership with a local entity, like India, an example, you can't have foreign, and don't quote me on this for the exact pieces, but as I understand, you can't have a foreign entity that's owned more than 51%, or a foreign entity can't own more than 51% of a company in, in India, it has to be you know, the majority owned by, by a local business. So all these different rules, all these different things just complicate it so much. So as much as they want it to be easy for, for you know, everyone in that audience, it, it definitely is these different silos. So it's having that mentality of thinking at the big picture is super important. Um, for exactly the reasons that you said, you know, one link that kind of works across the board, et cetera. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Sorry, that, was a, that was a bit of a tangent. I, I got, I got off on the weeds a bit. Right. But so like, so like, I mean, what are Apple and Amazon thinking? Like, like, you know, if a customer in, you know, Germany goes to like the U S Amazon website, it's just going to give them like an error message or be like, you can't buy this book. It's not available. Like, why don't they just automatically redirect them to the right page so they can actually buy the product or the book? So, Two different reasons. One is that it's actually really hard um, to to figure out where someone's coming from. That's the easy part. But to find the same product in a different storefront, we spent thousands of hours of figuring out those algorithms to match them back and forth. Um, you know, doing it for a book, you know, and only a book is, is relatively easy. But as soon as it's a you know a book in ebook versus paperback versus audiobook, whatever, you have different attributes, different metadata that you have to find. So kind of keeping those pieces the same ends up. So as you kind of expand that further and further, it gets more and more complicated. And you know, something that we enjoy solving, we're, we're a bunch of nerds, and we like the complicated problems. Um, and the first part of your question is, you know, why, why can't someone from Germany buy that product? And it's, um, there's a difference between the digital and physical goods. So if it's a physical good, they can buy that product because it's not a digital rights licensing issue. You know, they would have to then pay for the shipping and deal with the extra time and so forth. When you get to you know physical or sorry digital items, you have your digital right licensing. It causes all sorts of issues. So the typically how it works is wherever your credit card is registered, you're allowed to buy digital rights in that place. So iTunes now has 155 different storefronts around the world, one that coordinates with all these different countries. And that became incredibly cumbersome uh, when I was working there to to do marketing. Right, you have people all around the world that want to buy you know whatever Rihanna album or Beyonce, whatever it may be, and you have this this problem again. That's what kind of led to that frustration that got me. I mean, going, but it's because of that digital rights licensing, they're only allowed to sell to people with a U.S. credit card, you know, when they're in the U.S. or uh, from the U.S. store. So lots, lots again, you know, it's, I wish I could give you a simple answer, but every single thing you peel back that, that layer of the onion, and it gets more and more complicated. Yeah, I gotcha. So, so can you tell us like how this tool you created works and what it actually does for people? Sure. So it, Fortunately, we've been going at this for a while now, and the tool has definitely evolved. So there's a handful of different ways that it works, but the um, originally started off was with was you give us a single link and we take that link and we want to figure out that same product no matter where that click is coming from. So if a click is coming from the same country where the link originally came from, that's really easy, right? You have an amazon.com link, you have a click coming from the US, perfect, we just affiliate that and send it on. That's, that's the easiest use case. When we have an amazon.com link but someone's coming from the UK, you then need to find that same product in the UK. So what we do is we take that link, we pull out the ASIN, Amazon's uh, unique identification number, figure out everything we can about that product and use that information to find the product in the foreign store. So Amazon's got a, a robust set of APIs. We take that, we, we clean up the data, start matching it back and forth. We have a series of five different sets of algorithms we go through to kind of find that item. Once we find it, we affiliate it with the amazon.co.uk affiliate program and pass it on. Um, and the, the beauty of it all, though, is it's supposed to work seamlessly all the time. You drop in a link, boom, it's done. You can run with it and go. Um, but as things have expanded, we've taken this a step further. So we have what this concept called advanced targets. So the idea is that when someone's on an iOS device, they're probably more prone to buy from the iBook store. You know, if they're on a Kindle, yes, Amazon makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, if they're on an Android device, maybe it's Amazon, maybe it's Google Play, et cetera. So the idea is that you can make this link even smarter, not just to know the geo redirection between different Amazon stores, but also different ecosystems as well. And you can start to kind of boil that down into you know, the different ecosystems that are the logical choice for that, that person. Um, so different layers and layers again to, to kind of make one link work better, make it easy for the end user, make it easier for you as the marketer, let us take care of all that mumbo jumbo in the background. Gotcha. Yeah. So that was like a lot of like programming speak. That was a little complicated, <laughs> but like basically it was like, down, like simple is like, like you get one link for mm -hmm. your book. So it's like one link for your book on Amazon and can be your ebook or your print book or your audio book. And that one link will work for anyone anywhere in the world and take them to the most relevant website for them, whether it's in Germany or Japan or the US, so they can actually buy your book. And what you're doing is you're tra you're like connecting that with Amazon's affiliate program so that not mm -hmm. only do you make the sale of your book, 
but you also get that extra four to eight percent commission on top from Amazon's affiliate program. And that's not just for the US, but also for the UK program or their, you know, Germany program or whatever. So, so you're basically just helping people make more money um, from the affiliate program and make like a, an easier, better link for people. Um, and that's why I love it, because it's just like, okay, it's like a no-brainer to have like a better customer experience and me as a business owner make more money and I get to sell more books at the same time. It's like a no-brainer. Yeah, so there's kind of three different value adds. I think you hit most of those right there. But yeah, we want you to have a better user experience so you can sell more books, right? So again, your users kind of go into different places. B, we want to make sure that you make more money, right? You as you know, an author, we want to make sure you can take as much as you can. Selling that book is definitely most important. But if you can get another 4 to 8% from the affiliate program, even better. And the third one that you didn't hit upon is the metrics. We want to tell you what is and isn't working. So if you use a different link on Twitter versus Facebook, you can kind of start to see what is and isn't getting more clicks, et cetera. So you can start to hone in and make your marketing more powerful. Again, we want to give you the tools to be the best marketer you possibly can be, sell the most, earn the most, et cetera. Yeah, that's, that's such a great point. So actually I'm in my account right now and looking like on the home page, and there's this performance chart mm -hmm. um, and I can do it for any time period I want, but it shows me like the last 30 days where my traffic and sales are coming from. So I can actually see exactly, okay, I've got, you know, 300 clicks from this website and a hundred from that website. So I know like what's actually working to actually get people to click on my links and actually buy my books, which I think is a super valuable tool, you know, because I've been doing marketing for years and years and years. And it's like, you know, you can post on Twitter every day, but if you don't know if you're actually getting any traffic, you might just be wasting all your time because that might not be the best avenue for you to actually drive traffic and get sales. Exactly. Reddit may be the perfect audience for you, but you don't know that until you can actually start to compare, you know, apples to apples. You know, what what clicks are actually leading to sales? And there's a you know a handful of different tricks you can get into with uh, the dashboard as well, and assign different affiliate parameters to different links so that you know the exact sales from each of the different links, etc. Um, there's there's definitely a lot of little tweaks you can do to, to leverage the Amazon Associates program for more than just revenue. Gotcha. So I know we've been talking about this a lot, and people are probably like super excited right now. So let's just share the link real quick to the website to the tool. So sure. if people want to just check it out, they can take a look. Yeah. So it's Genius Link is the name of the company, but the uh, the domain is G E N I dot U S. So it's Genius but shortened. So G E N I dot U S Genius, um, and that'll take you to the website. And then from there, you can you know uh, create an account, jump into the dashboard, um, look at everything as well. But real quick too, I think that brings up a great point that you know. Genius Link is, is the flagship product. That's the one where we spend a ton of time and put a lot of effort and energy. But it's really a, a more advanced tool. Um, we were fortunate enough a, a couple years ago to acquire Booklinker. Uh, Booklinker was one of our competitors in the, the book space specific for indie authors on Amazon. Um, they, they, take, they took a, a pretty rudimentary approach, but, but did it relatively well and uh, were able to pick up you know, quite a bit of traction. Unfortunately, they, uh, they pissed off Amazon at some point. And it just never really worked for them, so they just couldn't support it. Fortunately, we've been able to build a really great relationship with Amazon. We were able to acquire it, um, fix it up a little bit, and have just this tool that's the much simpler version of, of Genius Link. So if you really like to get nerdy and you know dive in and you know talk about advanced targets and do these different things with links, Genius Link is where it's at. But if you're more you know focused on, on being an author and the marketing is kind of a pain for you, definitely encourage you to check out the book linker side. The book linker side, of course, is free. It's uh, scaled down. You can use your associates thing. Uh, the Genius Link side, again, it's the much more advanced tool and there as a fee that's associated with that a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. so, so is that booklinker.com? Is that the URL? It's booklinker.net actually. Okay. So uh, booklinker.net and that's the totally free tool. So booklinker is totally free for authors mm -hmm. and it has all basically the same functionality. It'll work uh, anywhere, a, any country. Yeah. It's a simplified functionality, but yeah, that core piece where you get a single link, you know, my book to slash whatever it is, is going to work across the board. It uses our, you know, fundamental, uh, technology to make sure it all works. We just make the dashboard way simpler so you don't get lost in all the uh, the tech speak. Yeah, totally gotcha. So so can you share with us like, you know, from a from a new user for this, like, okay, someone's listening right now, they're an author, they've got several books published. Uh, they've probably got links to their books posted on their website and their blog and Facebook and everywhere. You know, as a new user, what would you do first to make this start working for you? So the first question is, do you enjoy marketing or is marketing a chore? Yeah, if marketing is a chore, go to booklinker.net, drop in your books, get those links, and you're essentially done with it, right? Just replace your amazon.com links or your amzn.to links, the short ones, with these new special links, um, and it's just going to start working across the board. Um, if you want to take it a step further where marketing is a chore, but you're kind of interested in the associates program, then I would encourage you to go to Amazon's associates program. You can find a link to the associates program in the very bottom of the uh, amazon.com website. 
sign up for that program. Um, it uh, gets a little bit more complicated, of course, but you'll start. You'll get this tracking ID, which is a unique ID that will allow you to uh, earn your commissions, like we were talking about before. So that's kind of step two in your your level of or layers of, of enjoyment of marketing. Now, if you really do get joy out of marketing and think it's a, a fun challenge, then we encourage you to you know transition over to Genius Link, where you're gonna you know it's definitely gonna take a little bit more to learn the platform, be just so much more that you can do. Um, from that side, you know, definitely encourage those to get set up with the affiliate programs or the associates programs, as they're called, in at least two to three of their, their core regions. So Amazon.com is typically one of the big ones. Amazon.co.jp, or sorry, uh, co.uk, the UK program is the second one. Canada and Germany are usually three and four in that order. So once you get signed up for those affiliate programs, you can drop those IDs into the dashboard, you can build your links, and you already have you know 90% of the functionality. If you want to go in and tweak them, um, yeah, there's there's that chance as well. But we always encourage people to kind of take one step at a time, get those links, start to post them, start to test them, play with them, look at their metrics coming through, and then refine them. So I think the big difference here that we're hinting at is that with, with Genius Link, you can go back and edit links at any time. You can play with it. So you have the opportunity to make a mistake and go back and fix it, where you know a Bitly link or some other link, you already tweet that or you throw that on Facebook. That's, that's gone. You have to delete that post. You can't go back and edit those. Or we really believe that, you know, to do your marketing well, you have to be able to learn from your mistakes and change those and, and just help it evolve forward. Yeah, it's such a great point. I think that's a, one of the biggest pain points I've had with marketing is like you find some tool, right? And like you start to use it. Like I said before, like the, like the stuff I used before I found Genius Link, it was like I would have this tool this, with this similar kind of link, but like, you know, six months later it stopped working. And like there's nothing more annoying to me to like have a campaign that's working, that's making me money. And all of a sudden it stops working because the tool stops working. And like, I, it's just so frustrating. And it, yeah. and it not only does it like, do I like lose money and I get like upset, but like it, it totally demotivates me to do anything new in the future. Like I don't want to like go out and write, like create a whole new campaign just to have it blow up six months later and stop working. Like I want something that's going to work five years from now, 10 years from now, hundred years from now. And that's one of the reasons I just love this tool, Jesse, that you created because it's like, like, you know, it's going to be around, you know, it's going to keep working. And like you said, you can go back and learn from those mistakes and make those edits. I think that's just really, really awesome. Thank you. It's yeah. Links are links are an important part, right? A link is kind of the glue that holds all your marketing together. So, you know, there's a lot of trust that our clients put into us and you know, it's, <laughs> we've worked hard to earn that trust and, and thank you for, for trusting us and, and you know, endorsing what we do. It's, um, but it's, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make sure that works. Um, you know, these tools yeah, I can that, <laughs> Yeah, um, these these tools that we see new competitors showing up all the time, right? There's in the we call it the intelligent link landscape. There's 27 different link management tools now, you know, and, and you know, Booklinker and Genius Link are just two of those. Uh, but they they ebb and flow. You're constantly seeing new ones come up, and you're constantly seeing ones go away because they're not paying attention to some of those fundamentals, right? Building their technology on infrastructure that's going to work, not you know, spending the time to build that relationship with Amazon and iTunes, those other people that you know they have you under under the thumb. If if you do something that pisses them off, just like we saw with Booklinker, you know, they can they can ruin your model. So you know, it's it's really important that you know, you choose wisely. A because it's such an important part of your marketing, but B you know that that company has your best interest at heart and really you know puts in the legwork to make sure that they are going to be around for a while. I completely understand your concern where stuff disappears. It hurts. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so another big pain point I had with around this whole link thing was like on my website. So, you know, I've got a blog with like hundreds and hundreds of articles and there was like hundreds of links to different books, different mm -hmm. places on Amazon. And so I, a couple months ago, I just found your tool. I don't know if you created it. I'm assuming you guys did because it works with Genius Link. So it's like a, it's like a WordPress plugin. Mm -hmm. And what it does is as soon as you install it, it automatically changes every link you have anywhere on your site to anywhere on Amazon to like this Genius Link that works in every country. So no matter any, where anyone clicks it, it works automatically. And it cookies them with my affiliate links. So I'm earning an extra 4 to 8%. And all it took was like one click to install it. And hundreds of links were changed because if I had to go to that manually, that would have taken days just to do that. Yeah. So the Amazon link engine, I think, is what you're referring to. Um, exactly. So, you know, our our linking technology. Again, we've been fortunate enough to have been around for a little bit. We have different ways to to integrate this technology. So, you know, building those genius links from the dashboard is is um, becoming the more prevalent way to do it. But you're exactly right. When you have a uh, you know some historic website, not historic, what some website that has some history and a lot of different links, going back through and changing those all out is a major pain. So we. We built this, it's based on JavaScript, but um, the plugin will install some JavaScript. That JavaScript, every time the page loads, it'll find all your Amazon links and it'll convert them into links that we can recognize and we can do our magic with. So again, it allows you to you know, swap around the affiliate parameters that you want for your Amazon ID, gives you some reporting to know what's going on. 
et cetera. But it's, yeah, different ways to leverage the same technology. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I use it for the podcast show too. So like in all my show notes, usually my guests have like a books or something they link to you. And so we don't have to worry about finding some affiliate link to link to it. Like it just, the plugin just automatically does it for us. Exactly. And that's, uh, outside of the, you know, we, we work with a lot of authors and, and book publishers and so forth. But um, another area where we're seeing a lot of traction is, is these bigger publishing websites um, that have exactly reviews of all different sorts of products. It's such a pain for their authors and editors to go in and have to create an affiliate link for every single time they do it. You know, they're, their whole piece is writing the content, allow us to kind of go in and monetize that for them. So it's worked out well. I'm, I'm glad you're getting some value out of it. Yeah, totally. I, mean, I love it. And the, I mean, it's free too to get started. So like, that's, you know, another cool thing. Like I can't, like, I, I probably sound like ridiculous right now because I'm just so excited. <laughs> but like, honestly, like I found so many different tools online and so much stuff just didn't work or cost so much money. It was just garbage or stopped working after a couple of weeks. And um, this is one of those things that like, I'm just so happy I found for my business. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show to share with folks. Um, so thank you. One, one quick point on that I want to bring out. This is a brand new change is um, we've actually moved away from the free tier on Genius Link. So it was, a, it was an important decision. It was a hard decision. Um, the, we've been small guys for a long, long time, and we always wanted to support the small guys. So instead of creating a free tier with Genius Link, what we did is we poured a bunch of resources back into Booklinker and made Booklinker even better. So if you're looking for a free tool, Booklinker is where it's at. You know, and that is going to allow us to continue to you know, support the people that want to start off with free tools to really kind of kick the tires and make sure it works, then also have the resources to make sure the Genius Link, we can continue to, to build even cooler tools and make it even more powerful. So, um, yeah, thank you for, for you know, bringing that, that pricing thing up. It's, um, it was a hard decision. It took a lot of thought and a lot of different conversations with people to come up with that. So, unfortunately, Genius Link is no longer free. If you have an existing account, you, know, you can continue to use the existing pricing plans. But as of last week, we actually launched it, uh, a new pricing plan. So just wanted to throw that out there to be totally transparent. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks for that. So, so that's really cool. So, yeah, so Booklinker, I mean, it's still totally free to use and uh, it's still an amazing tool. And I think that the WordPress plugin, that's still free, right? So that's a good question as well. The WordPress plugin, the free part of it is that it'll make sure your links work across the board. You'll actually have to get a Genius link to start managing your different affiliate parameters. But if you have all your links affiliated with you know, Amazon.com, that's still going to work out just fine. But when someone clicks from Germany and you don't have an account, we're going to send them to the German store. We're going to use the, the house track ID until you give us yours via the Genius Link account. So it's uh, so you won't yeah, get paid an extra for the commission, but you'll still get the sales, which is really the most important part anyway. Exactly. Um, and that again, that's the, the perfect defining line. And, and yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Gotcha. Cool. That's awesome. Um, cool. So. Uh, you know, I know you've got some more advanced stuff with Genius Link that's like way more than just for authors and for books. Like, you know, you can use uh, for retargeting and all kinds of really cool stuff. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the advanced stuff that marketers can do with it? Absolutely. So this is where it's been really fun, right? So my, my pain point was around, you know, the, the geotargeting and the global piece. So we built a tool specifically for that. But as this tool caught on with more and more people, we kept getting more and more requests. Oh, can you do this? Can you do that? And it started to become really interesting because they were pushing our platform ahead further and faster than what we knew what to do with it. And this is uh, some of the tools that you mentioned is, is exactly that. So retargeting, it's uh, you know, work with a handful of, of really cool clients to kind of build out this, this process. The idea is that now um, retargeting works really well when you have a website and you send someone to that website, they express some interest and you go market to them. But you need a website, you need some sort of landing page or some sort of property that you own. But as the web becomes more and more closed and you get people marketing on Twitter and Facebook and Reddit and wherever it may be, and then sending to another third party place like Amazon or iTunes or another, you know, walled garden more or less, sending them to your property first is actually not ideal because it introduces another click. It, it, you know, your conversion rates are going to go down. So when you have to send between two closed areas and you still want to retarget to them, the only opportunity to do it is with a link. So what we do with those links is instead of just doing a straight redirect, we actually pause for a fraction of a second so that we can fire that JavaScript for the retargeting and send them on. So what that means essentially is that you no longer have to go to your website. You can still use um, retargeting from Facebook and Twitter and, and Google and so forth to build an audience of people clicking your links, even though they're not going to your website. Um, so that probably in itself could be a whole nother course and, and lesson on, on how to take full advantage of that. And I'm, uh, I'm honestly not <laughs> qualified enough to, to teach that, but um, we're seeing it become more and more uh, prevalent, uh, especially with the, the authors that you know, enjoy marketing to the nth degree and are writing some sort of series where you know, book one, they build the audience and they market to that audience to release book two because they already know exactly who's bought book one or click to buy book one. So it's much more um, concise and, and targeted and just kind of work their way through. Uh, so retargeting is a good one. Um, 
So, so I want to talk one. a little bit more about that because I think this, this is huge. Sure. And like, I think a lot of people might not get it, especially if like, you're new to marketing. So retargeting is essentially like when you build an audience of people who you know are interested in what you do. So like normally like the standard retargeting that's free that a lot of people use is like when someone comes to your website, it, it like creates like an audience of those people like mm -hmm. say in Facebook ads. So you can go back to Facebook and you can have an ad run only to the people who have already visited your website or specific pages on your website. And that's super powerful because I, I know a lot of people like on Facebook marketing are earning like 10 or 20 or 30 times return on investment just from retargeting to people who have already visited their website because you know that they're going to be interested in what you're doing because they've already you know invested the time in doing that, right? Um, exactly. So retargeting is huge right now. Like it, it's like the number one most profitable like way to to spend money advertising online right now is with retargeting. And so essentially, what this does, which I haven't seen anywhere else in the world, is you can now build a retargeting audience like with people who don't even visit your website. So like you could have a link on Twitter with a genius link to have someone go buy your book on Amazon, and you, then you can retarget like the thousand people that clicked from Twitter to your book on Amazon. You can now send ads to them or retarget them. Uh, and they've never visited your website before. They've only they've only showed interest by clicking on, on Amazon or on a Facebook video. So you can do this on any platform, any website, anywhere in the world. So like now, this is what you're basically doing is you're turning like free traffic sources like Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest into a way to build like a massive audience of people that you can market to very very profitably. And I think this is like this is like mind blowing to me because <laughs> like, like you know retargeting on Facebook is so profitable, but now this opens up retargeting to anywhere in the world as long as you have the link. Which I think mm -hmm. is just so cool. Exactly. You know, and so many places will allow you to place a link, but they won't allow you to, you know, set the retargeting pixel. So exactly taking advantage of that opportunity of this you know, crazy wide open web without having to send them you know, through that funnel of your website and losing that. So yeah, I thank you for <laughs> re explaining that because that was much more crystal clear than my uh, yeah. I, I'm such a nerd at heart. I'm in the weeds so often, day in, day out, that you know. I, I speak in way too many acronyms. So <laughs> thank you, yeah, Tom, for I totally get it. Like, I, I know what it's like, and I think a lot of people are listening will understand too. So, but like, if people do have questions about like the technical stuff or anything, I'm sure you know you're more than happy to answer anybody's questions if you guys didn't understand any part of this. Of this, absolutely. Um, and those questions, yeah. even even if it's just a little question or you're afraid to ask, please do because those questions help us so much in learning where we need to create you know help articles or make something easier. You know that that feedback through questions is is absolutely essential for us and we've gone a long way into making our platform easier to use but we have a long ways to go still so please you know any feedback any questions any comments is super valuable to us so um, yeah we'll make it really easy to contact us as well yeah that's another thing I like about you guys is like your customer support is just great like you just respond to emails personally really quickly like answer all my questions um, I know a lot of people I've referred to you guys have gotten a lot of their questions answered by email um, so that's really cool that you guys are doing that as well uh, absolutely you know it's it's confusing, and um, <laughs> we, we get that. We totally understand that. We were confused for quite a while too. That's why we built the, the tools and the, the software. So whatever we can do to help people, you know, learn and take full advantage of it. If they're taking, they're getting good value out of it. It's good for us as well. So it's it's totally in everyone's best interest. Um, to bring it back though, real quick, there's uh, one other feature I wanted to talk about real quick that we uh, rolled out relatively uh, not too long ago that I think is is really interesting. But we can now allow people to um, to A B test with a link, right? So normally a link will go from A to B and always go from A to B. Um, what we can do now is we can say, you know, every click or every, you know, 10% of your clicks or 30% of your clicks go to a different destination, right? So if you have a book and that book is for sale on three different places, you know, if you want to send a third of your traffic to each of those places and see what the sales are, you can start to figure out how that resonates as well. So, you know, if someone's clicking on an Android device and half the traffic to Google Play and half the traffic to Amazon and pay attention to see where the sales are coming from, you can start to figure out how to make that traffic from that device even convert even higher. Um, again, that was a super technical explanation there. Uh, the idea is that you can really kind of play around with exactly how much traffic goes where or how you want to split that traffic. Gotcha. So basically, you can run split tests with your links. So you can mm -hmm. have like two versions. So you have one link, like only one link, but in the back end, in the dashboard, you set it up so that half the people who click that link go to one site, half the people go to a different site, and then you can measure the actual sales based on whether they went to the first site or the second site and see which one converts better so that in the future you can direct more people to the site that actually makes more money for you. Exactly. You know, Barnes and Noble, you know, bless their hearts, maybe they're not the best place to sell a book. Or, you know, on the flip side, Amazon, you know, maybe people, you know, your audience for, you know, whatever you're promoting that that specific book hate Amazon for some odd reason. You know, and sending them all to Barnes and Noble would be a, a better, better example. Uh, but yeah, you get creative with that as well. There's there's a lot of different things you can do. Yeah. You 50% know, to the 
uh, you know, paperback and 50% to the ebook, which one works better, whatever it may be. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. And so another thing I love about this tool is that again, it's just one link. So you have the one link, like say in your book or on your website or on Twitter, and you never have to change that link. You never have to go back and edit that post. All you do is log into the dashboard and you can change where that link goes, how it tracks, what the split test is, the retargeting, you can change all that stuff in the back end if you want to, you don't mm -hmm. have to, but it's never going to stop working. Exactly. Yeah. Just like you have, you know, a content management system for your website. So you can easily change out what the website looks like. You know, we're, we're a link management system more or less where you can go and tweak those links exactly how you want it. Because once you post that link, you know, once you submit your book to, you know, a uh, Kindle developer, you know, it's, it's hard to go back and edit things, uh, especially when in social media, it's nearly impossible to go back and edit things. So we want to give you that, that point where you can make tweaks and, and optimize and, and make it even better for, for everything involved. Mm, totally. So I just want to clarify here, like, like I, you guys don't have an affiliate program for me, right? Like I'm not getting paid when I refer people that they sign up for Genius Link. Not yet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that's, that's uh, coming and we'll definitely let you know, but, um, yeah, so far all of our organic, uh, all of our traffic has been organic. So you know, thank you so much for, for all your referrals. You know, uh, Pat Flynn uh, has been using the tool for a while. Who's a pretty common name for, for, um, affiliate marketing and, you know, building website and monetization websites. Uh, we've got a few other, you know, influencers that, thankfully had a chance to play with the tool and it's, it's all come organically. We don't, you know, we're not paying you anything, unfortunately for you. I'm sorry. Great for us, but you know, maybe at some point uh, the engineering piece will be there, but no, this has been completely authentic and uh, you know, we, we work hard for your trust and thank you for, for sharing your experience. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, it's always awesome to share cool stuff that works. I mean, that's like what I live for is just sharing tools that work. You know, I remember this just kind of takes me back to my journey of, you know, becoming an author and like, you know, banging my head against the wall six, for six years like trying to figure out how to get my book published. And it was like, everything I tried was just not working. And then when you finally find that one thing that works, it's like, it's like, I mean, it's just this euphoria, this, this absolute state of, of bliss and pleasure. It's like the universe is finally working like the way I thought it should, you know? And that, that's just how I feel about Genius Link. And I, I just love it. And I mean, you know, thank you, man, for like doing this. Cause you're, you're helping so many people. You don't know like the ripple effects that this is going to create. Cause not only are you helping people like me who like, you know, you're helping me earn more money, uh, but you're also helping all of my customers, all of my readers by like, you know, not getting errors when they click on links. And it seems like such a simple thing, but you multiply that by, you know, thousands of websites and thousands of links and it, it ends up, you know, affecting millions of people. And um, so it's just really cool to see, see, you know, awesome programmers like you, you know, solving these problems, which I think are, are pretty important and often overlooked. Well, thank you for being able to explain these problems in uh, words and, and language that uh, is much more easily consumable. So yeah, go team. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Jesse. So again, share the links that you mentioned in the show uh, where people can find out more uh, about what you're, what you're working on and how they can get involved. Yeah, sure. So just genius, uh, genius link is the, the, you know, the, the uh, major one. It's uh, geni.us. Um, not genius.com, but geni.us, and then booklinker.net. Uh, Booklinker is, is the uh, much simpler program, really geared towards the indie author that doesn't enjoy marketing, but knows that a uh, universal link is super important. Awesome, and so all the links you mentioned in the show today will be in the show notes at publishingprofitspodcast.com. Jesse, thanks so much for being with us today and sharing, uh, sharing this amazing tool with the world. I really appreciate it. Uh, my absolute pleasure, thank you.